Welcome to this Hope to Go. Today I want to talk to you about load management. Let me ask you a question. Are you in a battle today praying for a miracle and it's taking more than just a physical toll on you? Or are you finding it difficult to find the words to tell the devil, get lost? You know, spiritual warfare is real, debilitating and tiresome. But the good news is Jesus has already won the victory for us. Now, three things happen every time we pray. Things in the heavens shift. Number two, we are being changed. And number three, God's heart is being intimately moved. See, God's into intimacy, into me, you see. So today I want to talk to you about how you can empower your prayer life and this hope to go load management. The first thing you've got to understand is this. If this applies to you, boldly approach the throne of grace. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Whatever your need is. Oftentimes, one of the greatest stumbling blocks to a victorious prayer life and transferring your load to God is a lack of confidence that God is pleased with us or that God wants to hear our prayers. The big hope truth, similar to sports, if I've disqualified myself from the game, why would I even show up to play? Think about it. Equally, if you believe that even in the weakest and the most uninspired prayers that you pray, they make a difference, you will desire to continue to pray because you'll invest in what you believe you'll see a return on. 1 Peter 5, 7 says it this way. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Did you hear that? And since prayer is a form of worship, worship, and a natural companion to it, though your love may feel weak, it's real in God's sight. And he loves even our weakest attempt to spend time with him. The times when you're most distracted, God sees the intentions of your heart and is moved by it. And number two, pray for God's divine order and perfect will. Psalms 107, 19 says it this way. Then they cried out to the Lord and in their trouble, he saved them from their distresses and he sent out his word and he healed them and he rescued them from the grave. Now, you got to pray for God's divine order and perfect will over every aspect of your life. Pray for divine order and God's will and not merely his permissive will in your work, in your friendships, in your family, in your finances, every area. God's divine order and perfect will is the harmonization between God's plan and yours that can only happen when you invite him into the planning process. Praying this way has expanded my heart and caused me to love Jesus more, opened my mind to his perspective, and truly helped me remove that spirit of entitlement, offense, disappointment, and stagnancy that's affected my heart as I've served and as I've given given this, this to, to prayer, I found myself saying, yes, God, thank you more and more. And I've seen more answers to prayer. Finally, but not conclusively, see divine possibilities. Jeremiah 32, 27 says, Almighty God says this, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? In the Bible, those who forcefully claimed their blessings did so because they believed the word of God and they saw that it was possible. The proof was in their pursuit. They didn't give up. They kept on going, and they kept going until they received their desired results. Look at the woman with the issue of blood, Mark 5, 21 to 43. Before she left her home, she had it settled. I know. I don't even need him to touch me. But if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made well. It's not even necessary for him to say anything to me. She had already seen divine possibilities. It doesn't matter what any doctor, lawyer, bank said about your situation. God has the last day. He has the last say. Practice load management, and that's your hope to go. <laughs>